beautiful Sunday afternoon. Welcome to Ask your P uh, Ask the Pediatrician. And of course, uh, today we want to discuss uh, wheezing and uh, asthma. That is uh, our discussion for today. And my guest on the program today is um, a consultant, a pediatrician from uh, UTH, a children's hospital, who is going to help us understand how asthma affects the lives and, of course, the health of a child. And, of course, uh, who is at risk and just what you need to know about uh, wheezing and or uh, asthma in children. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest on the program today is uh, Dr. Somwe Wasomwe. Good to have you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. Good afternoon, Nelson. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. First things first, what is asthma? So asthma is a, is a complex disease, which is due to some problems in the tubes in the lungs. There's what we call inflammation. So the abnormal cells invade the lungs and cause a problem which manifests by narrowing narrowing of the the, the the diameter of the tubes a lot of mucus secretion and uh, that makes it difficult for anyone whether a child or an adult to breathe easily yeah so it's a, it's a chronic disease there's chronic inflammation ongoing but from time to time you have acute episodes. That's where you hear somebody has been rushed to an emergency room to try and uh, uh, get relief from the hospital or from the clinic. Yes. Is it inherited? Is it hereditary? So that's a, that's a very <laughs> important question because it's always asked. So it's not hereditary as such, but there is a familial, there's a genetic predispos predisposition. For instance, I'll give you an example. If uh, if, a, if a mother has asthma, then they, uh, her children are more likely to develop asthma as well. So it runs in families. There is a genetic predisposition, but I'm not sure it's, we can say it's a genetic disorder. Yeah. So there is some familial component to it. It's not hereditary. You can have a, a father who has asthma, um, and then the, the children don't have asthma at all. So it's not hereditary, but it's familial. Okay. Yeah. When we look at um, statistics for Zambia, if at all they are available or not, I don't know how common asthma is among children here in Zambia. How is it? How are the rates? So, so asthma is very common. Uh, so we did a study, which unfortunately we haven't been able to, pl to publish. And um, we, it was shown that in school children, here in Lusaka, in Lusaka only, in school children, eight out of 100 kids had asthma, okay? So eight out of 100, it's not a rare disease. A rare disease is one that occurs one in a million, one in 2,000, but this one is eight in 100. So if you meet 100 kids, eight of them have got asthma. So it's not uncommon. Obviously, we don't have the higher rates like you find in the USA, in the UK, or in Australia, but it is a prevalent uh, common disease. And what kind of children are more at risk of, uh, of uh, asthma and which period is more critical for them? Yeah, so uh, the, um, th there are factors. Uh, like we said, first of all, there are factors that predispose a child to develop asthma. And these are things like we said, the familiar component to it. So if it runs in the family, if the mother has asthma, you may develop that. Obviously, children who have allergies, you know allergies, that like children who react to certain substances are more prone to that as well. So that's, those are some of the predisposing factors. But then there are other factors that may predispose the child to develop uh, asthma as well as causing acute episodes. So for instance, smoking. Yeah, so we discourage parents to smoke. And they shouldn't even say, oh, I smoke outside in the garage. As long as you smoke, you bring the smoke with you in the house. So if you love your children, do not smoke, okay? Then there are other factors, obesity. So asthma tend to occur in obese children. Uh, the other factors, again, like I said, allergies. Uh, allergies are a, a, a big issue because they predispose to uh, frequent acute episodes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sex, I'm afraid to say, uh, female are more prone to predispose asthma. <laughs> Than, uh, than, other, than, uh, than the male children. Okay. Yeah. 
help me understand something. Is there something like being born asthmatic or a child tend to develop asthma when they're already born and they're already part of the society, part of the environment? Yeah, so, so, so we said there is a predisposition. Mm -hmm. so, so you are born with that predisposition. You're born with you it. are not born with the disease. Mm -hmm. You are born with the predisposition. Then other factors will come in to determine wh uh, what form of asthma you're going to develop or whether you're going to develop asthma at all. So you are born not with the disease, but with the predisposition. The reason why I asked that question, doctor, is because what I wanted to connect is um, there has been a lot of talk when it comes to the first 1,000 days of a child, from mm -hmm. childbirth to the first 1,000 days, and of course the period of five years and 10 years. So at what period in a child's first years can asthma uh, come out? Again, it's a, it's a difficult question. Mm -hmm. All questions pertaining asthma to me, I find them difficult. So first of all, if a mother comes to me and says, oh, this kid has been coughing since birth, that's not asthma. Mm -hmm. Asthma doesn't present at birth. <laughs> okay, but then a child may start wheezing, you know, producing that whistling sound mm -hmm. from the age of seven months. Is that asthma or no asthma? We can't tell. Nobody can tell. So such a child should be watched cautiously, you know, observation, and until we see what happens in the years to come. And we keep on reassessing. So at the age of two, three years, we can look back and say, this is asthma. But you cannot definitely say, this kid, uh, seven-month-old kid, as asthma. There will be no way for you to prove. I mean, you can prove it, but it will mean extensive studies, which are not done routinely. So I, I don't know if you understand that. It's a exactly, bit <laughs> exactly. I do. I do very well, actually. So now my next question actually is uh, taken from um, the assessment period. When we are making that assessment to know whether the child has got asthma or not, what are some of the symptoms that we are going to be looking at? to help us really analyze the situation properly and make a correct guess, if I was to put it that way. Okay, that's a very excellent question. So, so, so what we do is we look at the symptoms. So, wheeze, first of all, wheeze. Mm -hmm. If you are wheezing, and then it's recurrent, it happens in episodes of wheezes, okay? If you have a dry cough, especially at night or early morning, so that again rings a bell, okay? Um, the other thing is chest tightness, okay? So those are the major symptoms that you see, the cough, chest tightness, difficulty in breathing, especially in the night and early morning, and the recurrent wheeze. Uh, the cough should be dry. The cough in, in asthma is dry. If, he, if one is producing sputum, it's unlikely to be asthma. Yeah. So, so actually with us here, since we don't have enough technology to, to do a lot of testing, we rely on the history, actually, and okay. you are right. And so the doctor should take a careful history regarding the symptoms of this child before coming to a conclusion. So you take a good history, family history, okay, you go to one generation, two generation, and see, and then examination usually won't show much unless they're in an attack. Normally a child with asthma, when they come in outside the attack, they will appear normal. So that, that won't help you, but the history is key. The history is key, yeah. Okay. So when we are discussing about history, when you're looking at history, are you just looking at the history of the mother, the father, and the immediate families, or you are even going generations beyond? Okay, we can go one generation. There's no fast rule. Uh, I usually, usually I get histories like, you know, there's an uncle, a grandfather, grandmother had this. It's very useful. So, so we don't go really like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like we said, it's not really hereditary, but we, we can inquire about the immediate family, the parents, and then the grandparents. That, that, is, that is enough. Yeah. How serious is asthma in a child? Is it as serious as it is in an adult? Oh, yes. Yes. We, we've lost children. Uh, and uh, a very critical period is the age between age group 13 to 14. There's usually a high mortality. Children do die. We've lost children like that because they were poorly treated. The major issue we have that is very, very crucial is absenteeism. Children with asthma will miss school days quite a lot. I mean, when your kid is wheezing, you're not going to send them to school. You, you won't do that. So 
and, and that, that, that episode of asthma may last two to three days. And then if, it's, if the asthma is poorly controlled, then after two weeks they have another episode and they miss school again, you see. So the burden of asthma is usually about school. But then if it continues for a long time as well, it may affect lung function, the way you breathe in. Because you remember, we said there's an inflammation, there are abnormal cells, abnormal chemicals being produced in the lungs, and, do, and this ultimately will change the structure of the lungs. And, and then you may not have the, lung, the same lung capacity like a healthy child. So the burden of asthma is very important, and we need to control this disease. The asthma can be controlled. It's not curable, but it can be controlled. You're watching Ask, you, uh, Ask the Pediatrician, and of course my guest today is uh, Dr. Soma Soma, who is a consultant a pediatrician from UTH, a children's hospital. And of course we are discussing wheezing and uh, asthma. For your text messages, uh, you can uh, feel free to use the number on your screen, 0955-5016, 0955-5016. You can definitely throw in all the questions that, that you have had uh, pertaining to this particular condition. And of course, uh, Dr. Osomo should be able to respond to a number of them as well. Now, Dr. Osomo, uh, how does lifestyle or a, parent, a parent's lifestyle really affect a child with asthma? I know you touched a bit on smoking, mm -hmm. but maybe you can help us really understand the gravity of a situation where a father drinks or smokes and has got a child who is uh, asthmatic. How does that really affect the condition? Yeah, so um, if you look at um, research has been done, and which shows that indoor and outdoor pollution affect the lungs. So asthma is not the only disease. Parental smoking is related to a lot of respiratory problem in the offspring. Mm -hmm. So that has been shown and it has been it's evidence based. Uh, so that's why we, we ask people not to smoke simply. Uh, and by the way, I, I should mention here that Zambia has done very well. If you go to Spain, what is the rate of smoking? 31%. You go to China, maybe 50, 60%, uh, maybe more. But Zambia is something like 2 to 3%. So we've done very well in that sense, but there are still people who smoke. So there is a link. The kid, that we call it passive smoking. Mm -hmm. So you are smoking, the kid is in, inhaling the smoke, and this affects the, uh, the structure of the lungs. And ultimately, it leads to a lot of respiratory problems in the child, including wheezing, asthma, and so on. Yeah. On wheezing, um I think I, th I think growing up, most of us definitely did some wheezing at some point. Now, for a parent who's got a child, if a child is wheezing now and then, should that be a concern for a parent? There are also ch some children who also snores a lot, actually. Should all these indications raise concern in a, in a, in a parent, a mother, a father? Yeah, obviously. Uh, by the way, so, so there's no relationship between snoring and asthma. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, uh, but, like, but just because you've asked for this question, uh, snoring is a sign of another problem, that there's an upper airway obstruction. Okay. Somewhere up there in the tubes, there is an obstruction. And that should be repaired because if you don't remove the cause of that, then this kid won't grow properly. Yes. Uh, like, uh, the, the, just one point to say about the wheeze. The wheeze must be carefully investigated as well, because you can wheeze due to other problems. For instance, if you have a big, big gland in the, in the lungs, that can put pressure on the airway, and this can cause a wheeze. So you should ensure that this wheeze is in both lungs for, for it to be attributed to asthma. Okay. Let's come to diagnosis here. How is asthma diagnosed? Yeah, so, just like we said uh, earlier on, the first thing is a good history. Mm -hmm. You get, you get, you as a healthcare provider, you get a very good history. Then, after the history, you get a very good history of the uh, signs and symptoms. Okay, after the family history, the personal history of the child, a very good history of the of the symptoms. Now we have we have uh, gadgets that can be used as well. Uh, one of them is called the spirometer. But the spirometer is something you have to blow in, and usually kids fail to blow in. 
So my colleagues at uh, Clinic 5, UTH, adult clinic, they do that very frequently. The children is a bit difficult. They fail to, 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 to blow in. But uh, having said that, there's a little gadget that can be used as well, recommended by the WHO. Uh, this is called a peak flow meter. Yeah, so this is a peak flow meter where a child can blow in and then we read, we see how much the child is able to effectively blow. And uh, with this, we can also say there is a strong possibility of asthma. This is called uh, a peak flow meter. So we're a bit low in terms of uh, uh, equipment to diagnose asthma. Uh, that's why we put a great emphasis on history taking, the family history, the personal history of the child, and a good description of the signs and symptoms of the child. Yeah. So the moment you, 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 you diagnose it and uh, you discover that it's asthma, what is the next step? The next step is to classify. Is it a mild asthma or severe? So again, you go back to the symptoms. We, we've got charts that we can use to determine whether this is mild or severe. Because if it's mild, they just need some medicine to take once in a while, okay? They give them an inhaler, which they can take whenever they have an attack. But if it's severe, if it's persistent, sorry, if it's persistent, then in that case, you need to be given a controller medication. So there are two types of medication, the reliever and the controller. The reliever is used during an acute attack. The controller is used as a prevention. That should be used every day. And uh, a child with ma asthma may use it for years before it's actually removed. So the reliever and controller. So it all depends on your classification. Is this a mild or is it a persistent? And we have charts that we use to determine that. Interesting. All right, so you're still watching uh, Ask the Pediatrician. Uh, just for now, we go for a very short break. When we come back, wow, our, our inbox is already flooded with messages. I guess uh, we cannot wait for the next 15 minutes. So we'll straight up go to the messages. And of course, I get to check out some of the messages. But for now, we take a break. We'll be back shortly. Daily exposure to different environments leads to a buildup of germs, oil, and dirt. These can cause blemishes and uneven skin tone. You need new Dettol Even Tone. It removes 99.9% .9 of germs and is formulated to remove excess oil and dirt, helping to reduce the appearance of blemishes, giving your family the confidence of healthy, even toned skin. For an even better you, new Dettol Even Tone. Dettol, be 100% sure. Hi there, my name is Deliso Emmanuel Chanda, but you can call me Deck. I'm that guy who knows who is cool and who is not. Do you know who is cool and who is not? Come, let's sit down and see. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Pedia. Today, we're going to talk about alcohol. Give me examples of alcohol that you know. Wine. Spirits. Very good, children. How is alcohol taken? They drink it! Let's watch a short video about alcohol. Yes, teacher! What have we learned from the movie? Alcohol causes one to get dizzy and can't walk properly. If one drinks alcohol at school, they will be stopped from learning or taste away. Are children allowed to drink alcohol? No! 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 What would you say if someone wanted you to take alcohol? Teacher! Teacher! Me! Me! I will tell that it's not good and it's harmful. I will tell my mommy about that person. I would say that good children don't drink alcohol. I would say that smart children don't drink alcohol. Very good. Let's say no to alcohol. No, no alcohol! alcohol. Yay! Remember, keep away from alcohol because it's not cool to drink. Be cool. Say no to alcohol. It's learning time. And play time. You know what they say. 
all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Join the adventure. Let's create, let's explore, let's grow, and let's discover. Tag along and join the coolest club, Q Club, every Mondays at 16.30. Your favorite music video show. In terms of music videos, we have the latest, the most trending, the most happening. Remember, say I told you we're chilling with the prettiest and coolest girl on TV road. So stay glued to QTV, you know, log on. Yes, you're watching us, the pediatrician, and of course, my guest today is coming from uh, Children's Hospital UTH, Dr. Somwe, and of course, our topic of discussion today is uh, wheezing and uh, asthma. Your messages are coming through on that number on your screen. All you need to do is to type your question, type your experience, and of course, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Somwe should be able to respond to that. Let's just straight away get into the messages that we've received uh, so far. Okay, so Doc, the first one says, is asthma, is asthma curable? If so, what is the remedy? Kashimoto from Sowese. So, um, like I said, uh, asthma is not a curable disease. Uh, we used to, to hold to the uh, World Asthma Day, which is celebrated on the first Tuesday in the month of May each year. And when we used to print the, the T-shirts, the, 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 team, the theme there was your as asthma cannot be cured, but it can be controlled. So asthma is not curable, but it can be controlled. Having said that, in children, there are three categories of children. We have what we call the early transient wheezers. These are kids who start wheezing very young, when they are nine months, one year. Those kids will stop wheezing by the age of around three. They are the late transient wheezers. Those, they start wheezing after three years. By 12 years, it's gone. And then we have the persistent, late persistent. These start wheezing after the age of, of three, and they go on into adulthood. Fortunately, it's a very, it's a minority. So a lot of people tell me here, even uh, our own director today told me he used to wheeze as a kid, and now he's, he's been cured by herbal medicine. I think, in my, from my point of view, he outgrew his asthma. So asthma can be outgrown, and the severe types can be controlled. But there's so no how cure. how can it be controlled? Also, for, for control, we have uh, medicines. So we have medicines that we use. These are called uh, inhaled corticosteroids, which we use, uh, uh, which, which are administered using a spacer. So we prescribe an inhaler, and, and we know that Kids, children can't use an inhaler directly like this. So instead, we ask them to to get uh, something like this. So, sorry, they were. So they, they will put the inhaler here, and we have a spacer, and it's very easy for for very small kids. They will use a, a mask. They will use a mask with that, and then the mother can administer the medicine. This mask is put around the nose, covering the nose and the mouth very firmly, nicely, and then you can give so, uh, the puffs as prescribed by the doctor. Okay, so a kid with uh, persistent asthma will receive an inhaled a medicine called an inhaled corticosteroids. They are different types, brand names, and which the doctor will prescribe. And uh, they will be following up the kid for every three months, every six months, until a time where they will feel the asthma is controlled and they can remove the drug. Yeah. So you can control by using the controller medication. And in, there are so many types of controller medication, but in Zambia, we are using only one. We have an asthma clinic at the Children's Hospital, which we started like six years ago, six, seven years ago. We have over 300 kids who are being followed up, and they are all very well controlled. So when asthma is controlled in a child, um, are there any, how often do reoccurrences usually happen? Do asthmatic attacks usually happen? So if your asthma is controlled, you shouldn't have episodes, okay. acute exacerbation. That's the goal. The goal is to abolish that you shouldn't have any. As long as you have 
if you're on medication and you, are still, you still have acute exacerbations, it's the duty of the doctor to try and find out what is going on. Maybe the inhaler technique, this technique should be taught to the caregiver. And sometimes there are problems with the caregiver. So it could be that. It could be factors. They could be allergic to something which is causing these exacerbations to occur. That should be addressed as well. Or the dose could be insufficient. So you, you can increase the dose. So there are a lot of factors we look into if a child is not uh, improving. Or it could be a wrong diagnosis. So don't persist with your asthma. If you've done everything so well, don't still think your kid has got asthma. Think of another diagnosis. Okay? Yeah. All right, we get to Doreen from Mamba. She says, uh, good afternoon, doctor. Can call cause asthma? Okay, Doreen. Uh, so, Doreen, today we are discussing asthma in children. What you are referring to is correct. Co could cause asthma. And this, is, this falls in the realm of occupational asthma. And uh, I'm sure I'm, uh, our colleagues on, in the, on the mines, on the copper belt, in the northwestern province, I'm sure they deal with such issues where you have uh, uh, occupational asthma. So it is possible that uh, a person who is predisposed and working in a coal mine, it is possible that they can, they can have such a problem. I'm not sure whether they use coal to warm themselves in southern province, I don't know. Because all these things, you know, if they, pro if they induce, they produce smoke, then there's a problem. There, there's a possibility that it can either uh, facilitate or an acute exacerbation. So it is a possibility. Uh, Martin Moses of Senanga says, why is it that when a child is born and the doctor will say this child is asthmatic, how is it contracted? Then uh, he also goes on to say, doctor, don't you think relying on uh, history, you can put someone on medication while the person is not asthmatic? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, let me start with the last one. Like I said earlier on, it is difficult to perform these certain tests on children. So even if we had the equipment, it's very difficult. Children below the age of uh, seven to eight cannot comply, cannot follow the instructions very well and perform the test. So even if we have the test, it's very difficult to, it's almost not done even in the West where they have all the technology. So. Children starting from the age of eight, nine, and so on can start trying to do the, uh, the peak flow, the one I mentioned earlier on, but the spirome spirometry, the bigger machine, is a bit difficult. Uh, so adolescents try, and that's where we start using it. So it's not really a problem of the, the, uh, the, the, the equipment, it's the feasibility, which is a bit the practicality of it, okay? Now, the, the first question regarding uh, asthma, there's no asthma at birth. Like I said earlier on, asthma doesn't exist at birth. You cannot tell. First of all, the airways are not very well developed in a, in a small baby, in an infant. So we can't. I even said that even in a child of eight, nine months who is wheezing, it is difficult to put the term, the diagnosis of asthma. Yeah. So my problem is not to treat the name. I treat the wheeze. Okay, so I treat the wheeze until after some year, some time, I may come to the conclusion that they have asthma. But I don't rush to put the term. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't like uh, also hide by saying this is bronchitis, like most people would tell. No, I would just say this is a wheezy child. We have to treat the wheeze. But then putting things together and with time you can tell this is asthma. Uh, asthma. The other thing is this, if your diagnosis is wrong, there, there, there are no side effects on the medication. There are very little side effects. So those inhaled medication, what they can cause is a bit of thrush, that is. But thrush can be prevented by cleaning the mouth. Sometimes hoarseness of the mouth, but so, and, and we don't give it for a long time. We give it like for two months, two, three months. If there's no improvement, we change. And we, we say, look, let's look for something else. Yeah, so th there's nothing to fear about side effects. Sunny from Eastern Province is asking, asthma and bronchitis, are they related? Hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, uh, so, 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 there are two different entities, actually. And, uh, and, uh, and in my opinion, bronchitis is rare in children. It's common in adults, where you can have an acute bronchitis or chronic bronchitis. 
With bronchitis, there's a lot of sputum production, okay? Where, as I said, in asthma, asthma, you don't have a lot of sputum production. But in bronchitis, we have a lot of uh, sputum production. And bronchitis responds to antibiotics. Asthma does not respond to antibiotics. We don't use antibiotics for asthma. So there are two different entities which should not be confused. We go to Chingola. John is asking, what is the probability of, uh, of children getting asthma if the father does not have asthma but the mother has asthma? Okay, John, that's a, that's a difficult question for me. <laughs> like I said, I cannot put a figure to that, but we know that if a mother has asthma, then the child, uh, uh, the probability of the child uh, offspring developing asthma is higher than for a mother who doesn't have asthma. That's what I can tell, but I wouldn't put figures to that probability. Okay. How can you be sure that it is asthma at 6 to 12 years of age when there is wheezing and high temperature in such a child? Yeah, so, so, so first of all, asthma does not lead to a rise in temperature. So a rise in temperature means infection. So it's some, something else. Like I said, the wheezy episodes in asthma should be recurrent and then it should be shown that they respond to the drugs. Uh, I'm sure most of our viewers know about a drug called Ventolin, eh, Sabutamol. So that drug dilates the tubes in the lungs. So if I give you the drug and you don't, it doesn't respond, it's either it's a very severe asthma or it's not asthma. So asthma, you see, as asthma, there's what we call uh, the, the, the airways, the diameter of the tubes will, will narrow and then will increase again, coming back to normal. Will narrow and coming back to normal. So there's that variability which we should take into account. Okay. So if a child comes with asthma the first time around and with fever, that's not asthma. Because fever means infection. Though, having said that, having said that, a, a viral infection can precipitate an acute episode of asthma. So again, it's now up to the healthcare provider to try and distinguish things, to try and investigate and see which is which. Yeah. All right, so you see watching Ask the Pediatrician, and of course, my pediatrician for today is uh, Dr. Somwe, trying to respond to every single question coming in in relation to the topic of discussion asthma and of course wheezing we go for another break we'll be back very shortly stay with us hi there my name is Daliso Emmanuel Chanda but you can call me Dek I'm that guy who knows who is cool and who is not do you know who is cool and who is not come let's sit down and see good morning boys and girls Today, we're going to talk about alcohol. Give me examples of alcohol that you know. Wine. Spirits. So jelly, jelly. And beer. Very good, children. How is alcohol taken? They drink it. Let's watch a short video about alcohol. Yes, teacher. What have we learned from the movie? Are children allowed to drink alcohol? No! No! What would you say if someone wanted you to take alcohol? Teacher! Teacher! Me! Me! I will tell that it's not good and it's harmful. I will tell my mommy about that person. I will say that good children don't drink alcohol. I would say that smart children don't drink alcohol. Very good. Let's say no to alcohol. No, no alcohol. alcohol! Yay! Remember, keep away from alcohol because it's not cool to drink. Be cool. Say no to alcohol. Daily exposure to different environments leads to a buildup of germs, oil, and dirt. These can cause blemishes and uneven skin tone. You need new Dettol Even Tone. 
It removes 99.9% .9 of germs and is formulated to remove excess oil and dirt, helping to reduce the appearance of blemishes, giving your family the confidence of healthy, even toned skin. For an even better you, new Dettol Even Tone. Dettol, be 100% sure. It's learning time and play time. You know what they say. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Join the adventure. Let's create, let's explore, let's grow, and let's discover. Tag along and join the coolest club, Q Club, every Mondays at 16.30. In three, two, one, and it's Ilyashi with Tal with a brand new four episode segment. Now this segment is called The Viewer's Choice. Tell me about it, you wanna know about it? Obviously, yes you do, cause you've been following Ilyashi and you have been a loyal, loyal fan, watching every single episode, posting about what you like about it and what not. So who am I to stop you from being a part of this good, good, goodness? as a fan so if you want to be on this episode make sure you like our facebook page qtv zambia and inbox us with the hashtag ilyashi with talu and tell me why why do you want to be on ilyashi with talu after that we're going to shortlist those people that we feel have interesting reasons and then they have interesting reasons to be on Ilyashi with Talu. After that, we'll get your numbers, ask you to send us a video. And once the videos are in, we're going to have an actual episode dedicated to watching those videos as to why you want to be on Ilyashi with me, your girl Talu. Now, after that, you, the viewers, have a say. You have a choice, hence the viewers' choice. So you're gonna pick how many, which four people you would like to see on Ilyashi with Talu on the next coming four segments. So get involved. Go to our Facebook page, like it, send me that inbox with the hashtag Ilyashi with Talu and why you want to be on the show. You see that we love you? Yes, we do. So make sure you do everything that we're asking you to. Bye bye. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are still looking at uh, some of the questions uh, that you are sending via our inbox. Uh, so keep those questions coming. Very interesting questions, really. Uh, Doc, the next one says, uh, is it okay for a 10 to 11 month old baby to snow? Um, so so it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not okay. Uh, usually snoring is an indication that there's an obstruction along the, the tube up there. You know, we call it, in medicine, we call it the upper airway. So it's a sign of obstruction. And usually, the common culprits are the tonsils. As you know, inside, down, down, inside our mouth, just in the throat there somewhere, we have some structures called the uh, tonsils and adenoids. These are structures that produce cells to fight infection. Sometimes they grow big and they cause obstruction. And for that reason, the, the child, especially in the night, they tend to snore. Sometimes if you observe them, they even sleep with the mouth open. They are breathing with the mouth open. So this patient should be taken to a hospital where they will be seen by the ENT doctor. ENT is an ear, nose, and throat specialist. So these are going to have a good look and down there. And if they are big, they are going to advise when this can be removed. I wouldn't, normally I think they don't do it like below one year. They will probably wait that the child grows a little bit. But ultimately, they have to be removed because those, those kind of problems will cause a lot of headaches to the child in the morning. They don't sleep well. Uh, it deprives the brain of oxygen, and uh, the child has headaches. They are in class. They will be sleeping. Uh, they will be dozing around. So uh, take the child to see the ENT specialist who is going to have a good look. They have special equipment to look down the throat, and they will tell us what is going on there. Please help me. I have a girl child and she is seven months. She has a bad cough for six months. We try medicines, but nothing has happened. What could that be? Yeah, so it's very worried. Uh, when a child, once a child is coughing more than two weeks, two to three weeks, it becomes worrisome. Uh, and this has gone on for almost four months. 
So one has to think, and like I said earlier on, small kids like below six months, they don't have asthma. So this is not asthma. So we should look further. I would have thought of something like tuberculosis, but the, the baby wouldn't survive for four, for four months with a cough due to tuberculosis. <laughs> so there are, there are other things that come to mind. There is a disease whereby the baby, after taking the milk, a bit of it comes back. It's called gastroesophageal reflux. So from the stomach to the esophagus, it comes back. A bit of milk comes backward, and then it goes into the lungs. The baby aspirates that. So I, th I don't know where this, this baby lives, but I think it would, go, it would be good to go to the nearest hospital, district hospital, or is a general or a central hospital, explain this to the doctor. Because if they have reflux, they need medication for that. Yeah, this, this is not asthma. They need medica medication to treat the reflux. Reflux means a bit of milk comes, comes out. Unfortunately, we don't have enough symptoms. We only know about the cough. I would have loved to ask more. Is there vomiting? Is a baby growing well? And so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing is, some babies are born with congenital malformations in the lungs. So there could be a, mal a malformation. Sometimes, as you know, there's the, the, the esophagus is called what the, uh, that tube where food passes through, and then we have the trachea, okay, where air passes. Sometimes you can have a connection between the two. And then food goes again into the lungs, and that can produce cough. So. If these kids should not be kept at home, take them to a proper clinic or district hospital because they could either have the reflux I've talked about or they could have a malformation in their lungs. Maybe under management of asthma, CK from Kawe is asking, how true is it that whiskey helps in asthma relief? The, uh, uh, CK, I've never read that in any textbook <laughs> of medicine. So I, I wouldn't recommend that, okay? Uh, I remember seeing these things in the Western movies, you know, with cowboys. When they are very ill, they, they will take a sip of whiskey, but this is not a, recommend, a recommended remedy for asthma, neither in adults nor in children. Uh, this one is not really affecting a child, it's affecting an adult, but uh, for the sake of interest there, uh, good afternoon, Doc. I'm 13 years. Uh, I'm 31 years old and have been asthmatic since uh, the year 2000. Lately, I've managed to to uh, to do it very well up to early 2008, when I seem to have attacks every now and then. What's your advice, Mark from Mongo? Yeah. So, Mark, unfortunately, I don't know what medication you are getting now. So, it's very difficult to answer your question. Um, like I said, I said earlier on, whether you're an adult or a child, the approach is the same. Your doctor should look at your symptoms and classify your asthma. If it's mild, then they can just give you an inhaler, like, a, you know, something like this. This is an inhaler, which contains, uh, uh, this one is sabutamol. So if you have mild asthma, the only medicine you need is this one, the uh, sabutamol inhaler. However, if you are classified as having persistent asthma, you, the, your doctor needs to prescribe an additional medicine, a controller, because this is a reliever, a controller that, that you must take every day for as long as the doctor feels that you need it, but you take it every day. So unfortunately, I can't give more advice because I have very little details. If I knew a bit more details, I would give further advice. Good afternoon, Doc. I have a six-month-old baby. A few weeks ago, he was having difficulties in breathing and was whistling. After taking him to the hospital, he was given Ventolin, and eventually he got better. Um, could, it be the, could it be that he has asthma, Twambo from Monze? So, Twambo... To me, when, uh, when I discuss with my students at the School of Medicine, I usually say like this. If, if you have one episode of a fit, you're not epileptic. There could be one, something must have provoked the fit. It's when you have recurrent episodes of fits that you are labeled as having epilepsy. The same applies for asthma. If your baby has wheezed only once, 
there's no asthma there for me. It has to be recurrent episodes. And, and like I told you, six months is a bit too early. Remember, there are other causes of wheeze. Uh, you, there's another disease in, in, uh, in babies called acute bronchiolitis. So you may have wheezing because the kid has got acute bronchiolitis. It just means that small babies have got very small tubes. And once there's infection in there, the diameter of the tubes becomes very small and they behave like asthmatics, but they are not asthmatics. So I can definitely say, safely say, this is not asthma. We'll have to watch and wait and see what happens in the future. Hello, doctor. If asthma is inherited from parents, the offsprings, can gene therapy be administered in the developing embryo? Siam Soa from Lusaka. Yeah, I think that one is a, is a tough one. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't heard of gene therapy in, uh, for asthma. I know, by the way, for your information, I'm of, of the, f from the old school. I've been practicing medicine for over 30 years. And, and, and in, uh, medicine has advanced now. They find a gene, a defective gene, for almost every disease. But I think as far as asthma is concerned, from the general consensus, I don't think there is a gene therapy available for asthma. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there could be somebody doing some research out there. Uh, uh, I normally follow the guidelines of a body called GINA. GINA, that's the global initiative for asthma, where world leaders, experts on asthma meet and develop consensus documents, uh, guidelines, practice guidelines, and uh, I've never come across anyone mentioning gene therapy for asthma. Can a child have both asthma and pneumonia? That's a good one. It is possible. So an asthmatic child can develop pneumonia. Yes. Yes, because asthma does not protect against pneumonia. So you can be asthmatic and you have pneumonia as well. What causes wheezing in a two weeks old baby? Oh, like I say, once you see wheeze in a two weeks old, always think of lung malformations, okay? Think lung malformations, because you are, you are born, you are just 15, 14 days old. Any problem like that means it was there before birth. So two weeks, two week old, wheezing, it's not asthma, look for something else. But, but obviously I can't just mention a lot of things here because if I'm in a hospital setup, then I will really take a better history, we'll do chest x-rays, we can do CT scans of the lungs and things like that, and then we'll come up with a A diagnosis, yeah. But uh, at least I think the bottom line is that wheezing at two weeks is not asthma, you have to look for another diagnosis. Tapsy from Kitwe, can one develop asthma in adulthood? Maybe the question could be, imagine, well, f uh, during somebody's childhood, maybe that uh, uh, the asthma did not actually come out. Is there a possibility that as a child, as a person grows, it might actually come out? Now, let me be a bit political here. I don't want my colleague, Dr. Kondorani Mateo, John, to laugh at me because <laughs> he's the one who deals with adults. I haven't read a lot about that, but what I know is that you can develop asthma in adulthood. Mm -hmm. I don't know up to what age group. The only problem you have to think of is that the elderly, the person, there are other diseases that mimic asthma. There's a disease called COPD, chronic pulmonary obstructive, obstructive pulmonary disease. So it may mimic uh, asthma and then uh, it's a differential diagnosis. But to answer the question, yes, a person can develop in asthma probably in early adulthood. I'm not sure where the age range, what is the limit of the age range here. Yeah. I wouldn't tell. <laughs> Meaning that I, don't, I, I can't tell whether a 50 year old can develop asthma for the first time. Uh, I'm not sure. Being a pediatrician, it's, 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 not, not, it's none of my concerns. <laughs> Uh, to, to, to those who are asking questions on bronchitis, there is a topic on bronchitis coming up later on. So for now, I will try to skip the messages on bronchitis because as uh, you had heard from uh, Dr. Somo earlier on, bronchitis and asthma are two different uh, conditions altogether. So we cannot discuss them together like that. So all bronchitis me related messages, I have to keep them in the archives until the time when we'll be discussing bronchitis. Um, 
let's t- let's talk about uh, as we, as we go to talk about maybe management and of course uh, prevention another one here says um afternoon doctor my son has been coughing six weeks uh, six weeks took him to the clinic he was given amoxio at first then after three weeks he was given uh cephalexin there is no change he's still coughing can it be asthma there is no history of asthma in my family Montinta from Lusaka. Okay, sorry, how old is this child again? Uh, the child is, um, I think it's not indicated, okay. but the child has been coughing for six weeks. So, so this is a very good question because it brings about the, the notion of a certain type of asthma. Mm-hmm. We call it the cough variant asthma. So the cough variant asthma is where a child will just cough. They have no wheeze. They never show difficulties in breathing or they never have a, a tight chest. But they just cough. They cough like mud from midnight up to 0304. And then they stop and early in the morning they are fine. They are even able to go to school. Come midnight the following day, same thing. So, and it goes on. So, a child like that We'll take all the, the entire history and physical examination. And if we feel this could be asthma, we put them on therapeutic trial, meaning that we'll give them the treatment for two months, for instance, and then we'll see. And it has happened. When you review them after two months, the caregiver tells you this child is now perfect. And we make a diagnosis of asthma, the cough variant. So again, we don't have enough details, not enough symptoms. We are, in, in, uh, we are in Africa, in Zambia, so always think, uh, rule out things like TB, it could be asthma, the cough variant, and so on. So I wouldn't call my advice to the mother. I think we should probably not go to a third antibiotic because we, it's like we are chasing something we have no idea of. So it be, it's time to investigate. This is time to s- step back and say, look, what is going on here? Can we do a, f- a blood count? Can we do a chest x-ray? I don't know whether a chest x-ray has been done in this instance. So, so there is a possibility of asthma, depending on the age. Is if it's uh, under five, they could have the cough variant type of asthma. Yeah, but this needs to be seen again uh, by a healthcare provider to, to, to see what's the real picture. By, by the way, pertaining to your, your comment, just, just a quick one. The, 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 the asthma in, the, in developing countries is underdiagnosed. And sometimes a lot of our colleagues will label it as bronchitis. That's the problem. And I'm glad that if the topic of bronchitis is coming, I hope the speaker will be able to establish, to show, to demonstrate the, the difference between bronchitis and asthma. Yes. Doctor, does asthma or asthmatic attack come along with uh, chest pains? Luyando from Kalomo. Yes, it, it is possible. It is possible that the, the, the patient, I mean, mostly we talk of uh, chest tightness, but sometimes a child can describe it as pain. Yeah, so it is a possibility. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I hope this, was, this question was, uh, she's referring to, to a child, not to an adult. Eh? Because when you talk of an adult having chest pain, then you have other issues. Is it cardiac? Is it the heart or something mm-hmm. else? Yeah, but... Uh, I take it, I don't think asthma will cause so much pain as such, but I think the chest tightness may probably be expressed by the child uh, as having chest pain. How can one prevent asthma? I would like to to qualify your question. To prevent the development or or the acute episodes. Or the development. Uh, The development is, is is a... it's a bit difficult because most of the things are innate, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You have the familial predisposition. You are, pr- you are probably you are allergic already, so you may not prevent, uh, truly speaking. Uh, uh, something came to mind, for instance. There's a way of preventing this. For instance, there's more asthma in town than in a village. So if you're exposed to a lot of bacteria, a lot of germs, a lot of cow dung and things like that, then you are less likely to develop asthma than a kid who, is, who grows up in Chalala or, or Jesmondin. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. So 
to answer your question is one way to prevent asthma is to be very dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke. But there's a hygiene hypothesis. Uh -huh. So nature has done it that way. If you are exposed to too many things as a young child, you are more protected. That's nature. Okay. Right. I'm not saying people now should roll in mud. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. So it's a bit difficult to, 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 to prevent the development. But you can prevent exacerbations. You can prevent the, the, the further remodeling of the airways by doing simple things. One of the things that has been proven now is dampness and mold. So if you, if you live in a house, if you live in a house which is damp, there's a lot of molds on the wall. That's a problem. Then your child will be having recurrent, if they are asthmatics, they will have problems. We know that. Okay, so there are a lot of these other factors you can do. Um, there, there, there are other problems like uh, rhinitis. Rhinitis is a, an inflammation of the nose. So that can predispose to asthma as well. So if you, t and, and usually when you treat the rhinitis, the inflammation in the nose, your asthma is controlled. So there are different ways of doing. You can actually control your asthma. You can control the, uh, reduce the number of acute episodes, but uh, really, um, preventing the expression, for instance, you can, you, can you can never change your gender, yeah. But you can do things like lifestyle. We, says, we said obesity is a predisposing factor. So if your diet is balanced and you keep maintain a relatively optimal weight, you are reducing the likelihood of asthma as well. But I don't think there's really a strong, uh, a strong approach to uh, prevent the development of asthma. Yeah. As we wind up, Doctor, as you obviously um, uh, um, um, uh, offer your last remarks there, maybe you can as well try to help a, a, a lady here who says, Hi, Doc, my child is two years old, and every time she jumps or runs, she coughs but does not cough always. What could be the problem? I'm very happy that uh, <laughs> this lady has brought up this because it's something we haven't discussed. Mm -hmm. It's called, there's something called exercise-induced bronchospasm. So there are children whereby they are okay when they are not exercising. Once they do some physical exercise, just at the end of the exercise or a few minutes after that, they develop a tight chest, sometimes chest pains, or they start coughing. So that can be prevented. Prevented by taking a puff of this subutamol, so if you go to see your doctor or your healthcare provider, they will give you, they will give your child this, and then they can have like two puffs of this, two puffs before, 30 minutes before the exercise, and they won't experience any problem. By the way, we went through the round the schools of Lusaka, and we found that one in 10 school going child, one in 10 has exercise induced bronchospasm. Because we make we made the kids run around the school, and w one out of ten will develop such symptoms. So it is it is very very well recognized. It's just that people don't pay attention to it. They are they are very prominent athletes who have uh, the same condition, but they they know they have this, and they, they were prescribed this by their doctors, and they, they do compete in a lot of uh, you know, disciplines. Yeah. Well, Doc, thank you so much. I think it's been, it's been an amazing topic, an amazing discussion as well. Messages are still coming, but I'm sure that uh, the information has uh, reached the general public. Thank you, Nelson. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. Time is not our best ally. I wish I could go on with uh, the other messages that are coming in, but unfortunately, time is not with us. We've been discussing wheezing and asthma, and uh, quite a lot has been said. Thank you so much to everybody who came through via messages. Make sure that you join us next week, same time, where we come through with another exciting edition of Ask the Pediatrician. I've been your host, Nelson Zulu, on behalf of of uh, my guest, uh, Dr. Somewhere from UTH Children's Hospital. It's bye-bye and God bless.